This is Twit. This is from uh, a telecom company in Japan who has a robot called Pepper. And uh, the company is called SoftBank. And uh, I guess they've been into the robotics industry now for a while. But now they have a robot that's actually pretty affordable. It costs about $2,000 will be available next year. And not only will this robot understand what you're saying for the most part in terms of understanding about 4,500 Japanese words, but the robot will also understand if there's a certain tone to its master's voice and it will react to that as well. So it's a robot that uh, also works with a bunch of different apps, kind of like a, a home, I don't want to say servant, maybe more of an assistant or a friend for people. And as we hear more about robots in the home, and especially as they sense our our feelings. I'm just curious, Sarah, what do you think? I mean, is this rad or is it kind of a fad or is it just downright scary? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's, I don't think the whole robot thing is a fad. I think that slowly but surely we are getting more comfortable with ways that robots actually help our lives, you know, become easier. We've talked about, was it on, was it here on the social hour where we talked about robots that uh, deliver food to you? I don't think so, but... Uh, it must have been okay. another show. I get my shows confused. I do too many shows now. <laughs> yeah, there was... There's, there's a, a restaurant, I think it's in Japan, probably. And... Or maybe it was China. And uh, there are, like, robot servers. You order food, and then a robot comes and, and, and makes your food and brings you your food, and it's sort of... You know, it's a novelty. But that's mm. the sort of thing that I really do think in 20 years there will be situations, particularly in fast food environments, where that just makes more sense, and nobody would think that's weird, and we'll all laugh about how we used to be afraid of robots. But I think that the whole kind of companionship type thing is, you know, it's not insignificant. I think that there is a need that people have for that sort of thing. Did you see the movie Her? That was a, you know, that was more no. of a software program. But it's kind of the 6%. same idea where it's you, you have companionship from something that is not a human. But, but you can sort of have the same feelings towards that companion that you would. And I don't. I don't know. I, I I guess there is a little bit of a creep factor, but I'm not sure that it's a, you know it's a bad thing. I think it in many cases, if it brings you know joy to someone's life. I mean, this guy is cute. That's another thing that's very manipulative. It's like Wall-E, the movie, right? It's cute till he tries to kill you, Sarah, while you're sleeping. But he's not gonna do that. He's probably just gonna <laughs> sing me a lullaby or something. I I'm a sucker for things that are cute. So it's like if it's a kitten or a you know cute cartoon character or a cute little robot it's like yes i want one and i want it i want it, it to cute. be my little friend he is cute i do yeah. think it's kind of rad i mean uh, you know i i'm a little bit concerned about robots taking over the world but uh, I, I think we're probably safe and uh, i think more than it being a fad i agree with you it's something that we're going to see more and more of and as a companion to people i mean i think about my grandmother who i just visited with she's 92 years old she's in a nursing home you know she gets very lonely and and uh, i think something like this would definitely cheer her up so um i think it fits into the rad category for sure